welcome to Access Chat. I'm really excited to welcome Alexander Hauslev Jensen from Be My Eyes to Access Chat today. Uh, this is something that uh, we've been excited about as a as a tool and as a product and as a way of enabling people for for quite some time. So it's it's great to finally have you on the show. Um, welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to invent this amazing tool that's enabling so many people around the world? Yeah, thanks so much for, for inviting me on the show. I really, really appreciate it. So, um, Be My Eyes is actually the brainchild of hans Jørn Wieberg, who is um, our founder. Uh, he is a visually impaired himself, and he was working with the uh, Danish Blind Organization for quite a while, and also hands his vision impaired himself. So he identified that having to call friends and family using FaceTime and Skype is not being truly independent because you already always had, or he always had to to figure out who like, to disturb, quote unquote. Um, and so he came up with the idea to say, instead of calling friends and family all the time, um, why don't we just make an app that connects a blind or low vision uh, person with a sighted volunteer who can be the eyes of the blind for a minute every now and then when, when needed. And with that, uh, BMIS was basically, or the idea of BMIS was basically born. Uh, and BMIS was launched in January 2015 um, and was a very global phenomenon from uh, day one, actually. Within the first 24 hours, we had about uh, 1,000 blind and low vision users using the application and more than 10,000 volunteers and we were able to support more than 30 different languages within the, third, within the first 24 hours. So it was really like a very global birth um, and also we acknowledge that this is something that really has the opportunity to help people all over the world lead more independent lives. Fantastic. Uh, I, I know from speaking with blind colleagues that that have used the app that it it's a, a really amazing thing to be able to enable them to do things that they've not been able to do before. And, and, and that one scenario that was given by a friend of mine was that he was in Hong Kong. It was the middle of the night. He was in a hotel room and it was stinking hot. And um, he found the air conditioning controls but obviously couldn't see them so he used be my eyes to call someone up and get them to help him um sort out the air conditioning and um yeah <laughs> be comfortable for the day um yeah, that's, rather than that's, have actually to suffer very, in very, silence. that's a very very common uh, use case uh, setting the temperature on the air conditioning or the oven or whatever it can be that's so Unfortunately, I think we, like, we live in a world that is poorly designed for people with visual impairments. Uh, so being able to rely on, on, on people who can be the eyes for yeah, a short minute every now and then, it's just something that uh, it's been a, a game changer. And I think you, you, you touched upon one thing that is really, really, like what I think is one of the uh, the magic source of, of Be My Eyes is that your, your friend like called in the middle of the night and since we have such a global community, we are, can now provide 24-hour access to site. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world or what time of day it is, there's always volunteers ready to assist. Um, we currently have 1 point, no, 2.1 million volunteers uh, in more than 180 different uh, countries. So no matter uh, when you need help or how much help you need, you can just always call uh, volunteers who are ready to assist. Um, yeah. yeah, and now we are actually able to provide help in more than 180 different languages. We only connect people who speak the same language. So if you are a Danish speaker like me, you will only be connected to other English speakers. If you're an English speaker, you will only be connected to other English speakers. Um, so we, that's something we're really, really excited about. And you need to be really fast answering the call, answering those calls, because I, my phone have, have rang, and I was going to answer, but somebody already did that, and already happened a few times. So you really need, you know, if you want to be the first to answer, you need to be really fast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's our our main goal is to uh, have like immediate access to a pair of friendly eyes, 
and across all uh, 180 languages, the average response time, so the time that it takes from when a blind uh, user clicks call first available volunteer, it, on average is 30, less than 30 seconds until someone picks it up. So that's something that we are, like that you don't have to wait for forever and ever for someone to come around or it's really immediate. You have the answers to your questions super, super quickly. That, that's that's you know that's great. I think it also shows the engagement of the community of the people that you've got that they're they're you know racing to pick it up so so quickly. Deborah, I know you've got some questions. I have a billion questions, and so I will uh, I will restrain myself, which is hard to do. But I love this. I love what you're doing. I've been watching it. I think a lot of have been watching it. I, I wasn't smart enough as Antonio, and I need to volunteer it myself, so I'm going to have to do that now. But the thing that I, there's so many things I love about it, but one of the things I love about it is it feels like this is how we're going to solve problems in the future. We all do it together. And so, you know, I, once again, be wanting to be a volunteer just to support, you know, somebody. I, I just think there's so many ways that we can give back. So I love so many aspects of this. But one thing I would be curious about, and there's many things I'm curious about, but so how does your company make money doing this? You know, is it because, you know, people are volunteering, you're, you're, it, it almost reminds me a little bit of some of the disruption we're seeing from the Ubers and the Lyft and it, it's, and then turning the AI into all this. It, it's, it's very exciting because I perceive that maybe you're just scratching the surface of what this can do. Yeah, I, I completely agree. So just to touch upon your first, uh, your first comment, and I think that you're very right. I think that the combination of technology and human generosity is something that can really make a big impact on people's lives like in many different aspects, not only within blindness. I think it's something this we have this like batch has been giving to us where this like this is like micro volunteering and really like removing any barrier for volunteering is something that can help people do more. Um, whether it's um, within disabilities, or if it's people who are lonely, or if it's just like someone knows something to someone who needs that knowledge. Um, I really think that, that uh, this way of connecting people through technology is, um, is going to be a game changer for how we see a lot of innovation come, up, to come, come alive. Um, and to, to how we make money, um, for the first three years of our existence, we, we didn't make any money. It's from day one, we were set out to say, BMIS has to be a free tour. If you look at the demography of people who are blind and low vision, they, um, the majority live in low income settings. And we have like a saying that an, a, an accessibility tool is only accessible if it's also financially accessible. Mm. So, and if it's not, then it's not an accessible tool. Uh, so we were just like, one thing that we will never change is that this has to be free. And we just have to figure out some other way of making be my eyes into a sustainable thing. And it took a lot of thinking and a lot of uh, back and forth to figure out a model that makes sense. We have a we have a design sentence that says only everybody wins when nobody loses. And that's what we try to make our that that has to be true for any decision we make. And I think that makes sense for the business model that we that we came up with and that we have now. Uh, we launched that a year ago, uh, it's called Specialized Help. And with Specialized Help, our blind and low vision users have two options. An option to call one of our more than 2 million volunteers. That is of course completely free, completely unlimited, but they also have an option to call companies. Um, that is also free to call the companies, but we, we work with our first two customers were Microsoft and Google. So if you are blind or low vision and you have issues with your Microsoft product, with your Google, with your Google product, you can go into specialized help, select the company that you want to talk to, and then we send the, the, that Be My Eyes call directly to the customer support center or to disability answer desks of these specific companies. So you'll be talking to a customer support agent from that specific company. And the companies pay to be on the platform. The company is paid to provide this uh, improved customer support to their blind and low vision customers. 
Um, and it's so that's how that's how we how we make money. Uh, continue to keep it completely free for completely free and completely unlimited for our users, but also allowing companies to be on the platform. And I think that the reason why we have or the reason why we have companies on the platform is for for several reasons. It for one is that providing a good customer support through a phone or through chat can be really challenging if you're trying to assist someone who is blind or vision impaired because it's, it's usually a visual issue. Um, and so the, the companies are much, they can identify and solve the problems much, much faster. And at the end of the day, have, have heavier customers, but also identify when their products and services are failing from accessibility standpoint and really using these uh, calls to improve their products. And we're of course extremely happy to, to launch this with companies like Microsoft and Google and we have other big household names coming on. Actually, everything from big banks to transportation companies, supermarkets, restaurants, everything, uh, public spaces, um, because this video customer support is something that we think is here to stay uh, and something that really allows, also allow our users to do much more because of course you shouldn't call a volunteer asking about your credit card information, but you can call your bank and ask about that. So this is a way for our users to achieve more uh, and allowing companies to do what's right um, and provide a good customer support to people who are blind or low vision. Wow, that, that's amazing. And I have two, uh, two more questions in one point. So one is, um, I have another idea of how y'all can make money, but um, so I'm gonna do that one after the first one. <laughs> I think a real problem that I see is um, many people are losing their sight. There are 2.9 billion people all over the world that are over the age of 55 now. And in the United mm -hmm. States, 10,000 people are turning 65 every single day this year, for example. And so often I see people that are, have lost their sight maybe suddenly to a stroke or something, and the older users don't even know about this and the, their their loved ones that are trying to support them. We're seeing this with deafness and with blindness. And so I would be curious about how, have you started addressing it with the aging population? That's one question. Number two, I love what you're doing with the companies stepping in and saying, oh, we'll support this, this makes sense. Let's give enhanced customer service. But, in, and I'm just going to speak from the U.S. lens. I know that this is in other countries, but in the United States, for example. Um, one thing that we do for free in the United States is we provide um, communication support to people that are deaf and hard of hearing, and they can call our relay systems. Uh, it's 511 in the United States, and you can get a relay. Now, that's old technology, I understand it, but what we did as a country was we added money to our telecommunication, I forget exactly how we did it, but it's like um, my telecommunications bill, when I get my bill, I have some extra taxes, some money in there that is used for the relay system. It seems to me that not only should the corporations support this, but the governments should support this as well, so that I, I don't know that it is reasonable for society to expect your company to ha do all this for free, I because you're making such a major social change. So it seems to me like there might be some opportunities for something like what was done in the past with 511 to support this in countries all over the world, as well as the corporations also standing up and making sure they're doing advanced customer service. So I'm going to officially be quiet and let you do that, and then because um, I know I'm hogging the mic. So, But I love what you're doing. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Where governments would go in and support technologies like not only like BMIs, but any technologies that um, creates a more inclusive society. I think that's in, in everyone's interest. That I think that it's that's a really good place to start if you want to everyone also to contribute to society and be active members of society. Really, like financially supporting both them and also technologies that allows people with disabilities to do more. I think that once we get there, I think that will be that will be huge and the impact of that is of course gonna be massive. So hopefully that, that will uh, what you're speaking about that will be 
the case um, for for us and for 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 other companies as well. Have you started talking to any governments about that? Because with the U.S. being 19th in the happiness factor and your country being number one, um, it seems like there's so many opportunities right now for my beloved country to really step up and show we do care about society. So, um, and, and I don't want to take over the conversation, but happy to talk to you more about how can we get people talking about that, not only in the U.S., but in other countries, because I believe that we should be supporting each other in society. Obviously, we all believe that on this call, but um, happy to take this offline, too. But I just love what you're doing. So. Thanks so much, Phil. And how about the old, the uh, elderly population? Have y'all brought them into these conversations yet? Are you considering that? It's it's very interesting because a lot of people that get older and become disabled, um, they don't have the same supports and services that the younger generation do. And most people my age and above are starting to feel just totally that like the world just doesn't make sense to them anymore. And we're actually seeing suicides because of this. It's um, the number of suicides are way up because people just are feeling overwhelmed. So I was just curious. And yeah, no. I, yeah, <clears throat> I, it's, I mean, we, <laughs> we, we, just to quickly address that, um, we have designed the app in a way so it's extremely intuitive even for people who are not tech savvy to use it. You can you can you can use uh, Siri. Just ask your phone to make a call. I'm I'm, just, I'm afraid to set my my phone up, but if you say, "Hey Siri, uh, make a call to be my eyes <laughs> eyes volunteer," the it, the app will automatically uh, open and launch the call. So it's completely hands free, making like the usability so so easy. Uh, and that's that's also because we want to make sure that this is actually a tool that can be used for people who are not super tech savvy or who are new to smartphones. Um, so definitely this is something that is extremely high on our radar. We've also been doing some integrations into uh, phones specifically designed for elderly people, um, voice controlled phones, extreme, like um, phones that are specifically designed for, for the aging population and integrating BMIs into that. Um, to ensure that ease, ease of use is there. So that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's really, really high in my opinion. And to make sure that this is something to do like younger generations who are to take and know exactly how technology, these technologies work, but also to people who are new in the field. Um, so I, I, I'm really interested actually in some of the sort of back-end gubbins of, of the workings of, of Be My Eyes. So you've got this network of, of, of you know, millions of volunteers. And so I'm interested to know how you manage to sort of map that and connect people. Because obviously you've got, you've, there's quite a bit of complexity. You've got a very simple front end. And this is, this is what's great about your product is actually what you're doing is quite complex. But it's simple for the end users. But I mean, how do you deal with the complexity of matching the user with someone that's available, checking the language, you know, checking the availability, routing the call, all of this stuff within 30 seconds? Yeah. Um, so, so it's it's you're right. It it it's definitely very complex to getting to simple. Um, so even though it seems like oh, there's just one button that's happened, everything happens magically. There's a lot of things going on in the background. Um, the way that we technically match our users is based on language and time zone. And that is to ensure that our volunteers are never um, disturbed in the middle of the night. Volunteers can only receive calls from 8 in the morning till 9 in the evening. Um, so the algorithms basically just check for that to say, okay, who's available, who speaks that language, who's in a time zone that is available. Um, and I just have to be extremely thankful to our engineers who are just working hard every single day to make this happen so seamless. Um, in English, it's actually nine seconds to connect from uh, on average, so it's a little faster than 30 seconds on English. Um, but yeah, that's so it's mainly like it, it is um, time zone language. That's the main things that we look on. Then we also prioritize a few things like uh, running on the latest versions to ensure the best quality and stuff like that. So there's a bunch of different. Uh, variables in there, but the two main ones are um, time zone and language, and that's to ensure 24-hour access to, to 
volunteers who speak the same language and to ensure that volunteers are not disturbed in the middle of the night. So, so a couple more questions and then I know Antonio has got some. Um, obviously, um, uh, the image for the sighted person is crucial. So, um, you're, you'll be expecting the, you know, the, the f phone that it's installed on to have a reasonable camera and you'll be um, also reliant to a certain extent on the bandwidth of the the, the mobile connection or the Wi-Fi in order to f f for this to work. Um, do you do any stuff to sort of optimize that picture quality? And, and one last anecdotal thing, I've been to plenty of meetings with colleagues who are blind where they've forgotten to turn the lights on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. So for the uh, for the lights light situation, there's as you as a volunteer actually have the option to turn on the flashlight of the blind user's phone. So if right. the lights are turned off or if something is not super sharp, you as a volunteer have that option to turn on the flashlight on the other person's phone to make sure that you get a good image of what it is that you try to explain. But right. you're right, yeah. we of course we rely on having decent at least uh, connection. We, uh, we, we, we have because we all, uh, our users are all over the world and also a lot of our users in places where we don't have the most reliable internet. Um, so the app is built with that in mind to ensure that that you can get a, 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 a good conversation even though you're not running on, the, on 5G or something super, super fast. Excellent. Thank you. Antonio. Uh, Alexander, today you, you, you mentioned that you are in Mexico City. You, know, you are from Denmark and you have part of your team in, some, in, uh, in America, in San Francisco, right? Yep. Uh, tell us a bit uh, about your team. Who do you have working with you in terms of uh, skills development? How do you guys uh, work in order to make sure that you, you no longer keep the app up to date, but you keep doing improvements? Uh, uh, because there's also sometimes uh, some uh, organizations and apps that they work with a lot of user feedback. Are you, how do you collect that feedback from the users to keep uh, the, improve, the improvements coming to the app? So we, you, about the team, we are still a pretty small team. Uh, we are 12 people, uh, but the majority of the people are in Denmark. Uh, a good handful of, of, of uh, engineers, communication people, and then we have a few working with the business development side of things. Um, so it's, yeah, we're still, we're still pretty small. I think we could probably be a few more. Uh, because it, is, it, it takes a little bit of, of, of resources to both grow a community to, to this size and also to be working with companies the size that we are working with. So it's, I think, but I think that's also our strength. We are like, everyone on the team is extremely, extremely passionate about, um, about what it is that we, what it is that we do and what, like how BMIs can, like, help people achieve more. I think that's the motiva that is the motivation about for everyone on the team. So it's a small, small team so far, uh, but looking to, looking to grow that. Um, and, in, and in terms of getting, getting feedback, we, we work a lot with, like we, every day we, we spend so much time uh, listening to our users, emailing back and forth, uh, but we also work with uh, blind organizations, our San Francisco office is at a blind organization and we really work closely together with people who are, you know, with our users. We also have a few uh, visually impaired team members on the team um, for, yeah, for, for a lot of reasons because they're amazing first of all, uh, also because they really understand the problem and, and uh, are able to yeah, do, a, do an amazing job getting, making sure that everything is just works in a way that makes sense. It's uh, getting customer feedback and really building and adding new features based on actual feedback and not just about our own assumptions is what has led us to where we are today. I don't think that we would have been able to, to 
to build uh, an app like this if we if we didn't do that if we weren't working very very closely together with both our users but also now our customers so that is that is definitely key so uh, what are your uh, uh, ambitions uh, in terms of growing um as you know blindness is a is a very big problem and there's a lot of people who are blind and low vision right now we have only have 125,000 blind and low vision people on the app so our goal is to make BMIS into something that is available to everyone everywhere um, no matter where they yeah no matter what income bracket they belong to uh, we think that this is something that can truly help people do more uh, so that's that's our goal our goal is to make the world more accessible to people who are blind or, uh, or low vision and one thing is to 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 one way that we can do that is by connecting them to sighted volunteers but we also think that companies play a huge role in this because it's usually because of companies products and or like public uh, services being inaccessible that's that's why you're disabled it's not because you can't see it's because the 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 um society around you and the products and services are designed wrong uh, so we think by working very closely together with uh, organizations and companies we can make these changes and make the world a more accessible place and that's that's really our goal and um, allowing people to to live more independently uh, and make a, a world that is a little bit better designed for people who are blind or low vision it's so exciting to watch this unfold because I believe this is what our future looks like and so I, I, it's very exciting and I have, I have a friend that I've traveled with that is blind and I remember one time she uh, and she uses a service dog for example and she said to me we were on a trip together and she she handed me and of course in the United States all of our dollars are all the same size which is very problematic for people that are blind yeah. and have vision loss and she said um, hey Deborah I'm gonna I want a cup of coffee I'm gonna treat you to a cup of coffee here's five dollars and she handed it to me and it was fifty dollars and so I'm like woohoo I'm gonna buy coffee for everybody in here and she's like why do you say that I said you just gave me fifty dollars and so you know luckily I'm honest and hopefully a lot of people are honest but I'm curious how and once again I think about what you're doing uh, my husband has dementia and he's there are things that he's forgetting now because of you know how his brain is working and I think and your point of living independently I think it because we want to we want to live as independently as long as we can you know most of us and I I see such interesting things also for people that you know uh, in the dementia and Alzheimer's it, it's it's just such a good idea that this thing but um, I was just curious as I was thinking of my, my friend giving me the fifty dollars um, how are people using it will you use the example I love the example Neil was using about being in a really hot room in Egypt I've been there before and by the way there have been many times I cannot figure out how to do the air conditioning controls so it's not just people that are blind and vision impaired that could use some help but I'm just curious how uh, some other examples of how people are using it and um, you know like the money example yeah um, we do a lot of product distinctions so whether it's like figuring out what's in the different cans or what's on your spice rack and uh, sorting out your record collection uh, figuring out if your clothes are matching uh, before going to a job interview if you are at a supermarket, um, you might be able to find the uh, the aisle with the toothpaste, but picking the right toothpaste or the right shampoo uh, can be pretty challenging. So we do a lot of like in-store navigation and shopping in, in indoor. Um, we also do a whole lot of like reading out, reading out newspapers, books, letters, uh, these kinds of things. Um, yeah, and. Yeah, I mean the the list go, goes on and on, and say, it's, but it's, we also it's, seem it's like as much as you can think about. Yeah, it, it's yeah, it's, it's so it's, cool. We we, all, we had a lot of really like um, amazing testimonials from for some of our users who have like let us know how they use it and 
to we, we even had a, a woman who was just about to get married and walked down the aisle and she had a volunteer check her wedding dress for stains before walking down the aisle um, we've had a we have blind parents who are making homework with their sighted kids because that the, the, their, their books doesn't have any greater feedback so the volunteers are explaining math problems and even having a, a, a volunteer um, narrating uh, there was a, like a woman who saw her son's first basketball game through the eyes of a volunteer who narrated the game um, so I, I think the list just goes goes on and on uh, and a lot of these things that we have, would never have imagined like people like doing the gardening figuring out if it's flowers or weeds or whatever it can be there's really like a ton of different use cases that we would never have thought of and it's just like the creativity of people who uh, it is definitely one of the apps that people keep on their on their on their phones for longer, uh, and, and probably forever. And and I, it's very it's very interesting that it becomes a, an extension uh, uh, of yourself in in case you 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 need help. It's it's somehow I know I, I see this almost like embedded on on any operating system as a as a way of uh, of people to to be able to operate the device so it's really really exciting the the work that you guys do thanks so much yeah. and i'm 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 really excited about the product too i think it's 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 an obvious extension of camera technology uh i'm, I'm interested to see where it maybe goes next as more and more people start wearing more and more cameras because it, you know, it may it may evolve from phones to other things yeah. um, over time, um, and and I know at the moment you're you're focused on on human guidance, but are, uh, are there any plans to to use AI for for things, or, or will you stick with your human volunteers for the foreseeable future? Um, like for the foreseeable future, we're going to stick with uh, the, all of the volunteers who are lending their, their time. As AI gets better, I think it would make, probably make sense for some things to include some of that, but uh, I don't think that AI is quite there yet. Um, yeah, but when it's, I think that as someday it's probably most definitely going to be a combination of like human in the loop and AI. Uh, if you don't trust the AI, you can always call it human. Uh, what it what that exactly looks like is we don't know yet. Uh, but yeah. it's definitely like of course we are we are looking into AI and how that can allow our users to do more and yes. do things that humans maybe can't do. Um, so we yeah, we we are we are tri trying to figure out how and when to do this. But I think that at some point the combination is probably gonna be. Uh, be a reality, uh, but for now it's uh, just like humans. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us. We're we're excited for the Twitter chat as well. We need to say thank you to Barclays, MyClearText, and and MyClink for all of the help that we get to to keep Access Chat on the road, keep producing the shows, and keeping the the community going. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure talking to you.